Hi! Today I went to the movies and I saw the new Steven Spielberg film Ready Player One at a local theater here in Munich. It premiered on the 5th of April and it runs 140 minutes. It tells the story about a young man who enters into a game world. It is based on a novel which I haven't read from 2011, I believe, which is in the genre of literary RPG, which means novels about uh, gaming worlds and the relationship between uh, reality and virtual reality, which also, of course, raises philosophical questions. They are in the movie but very hidden. There is one scene which I thought was interesting where one of the characters thinks he is in the real world but he discovers that he is actually in the gaming world after a while. But uh, they, they could have expanded on this uh, a theme, this philosophical theme of the nature of reality much more but uh, Steven Spielberg of course it not, is, is no Christopher Nolan uh, you can not really compare it to the movie uh, Inception, which was a very interesting movie, uh, also very fast-paced, uh, uh, an exciting and interesting and good-looking thriller, but also very philosophical. Uh, Steven Spielberg is a visual uh, director, he's not a character director and he's not a philosophical director, unfortunately, so they didn't do very much with this uh, topic. They could have done much more. But still I was uh, thoroughly entertained. There were just a few scenes which I thought were dragging a little bit. The movie is very fast paced. It looks very good. It was very expensive. It is cost 175 million dollars. You can see it also. Everything looks very good and it's also a very nostalgic movie because there are a lot of things from uh, films and also games. I'm not a gamer myself, so I'm not really uh, familiar with this, but I've of course have seen a lot of movies from the 80s or this, uh, late 70s and 80s and uh, 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 characters from these movies and also uh, objects from these movies uh, uh, appear in this film, which is fun to see uh, so many of these uh, things from earlier movies come together in one movie with uh, a new topic, with a new story. For example, you have the car from Back to the Future, you have King Kong in there, you have Batman in there, you have the, the Overlook Motel from The Shining in there, it's a fairly long scene even, and a lot of other references to older films, which it's a, a nice touch to it, uh, this nostalgia, and at the same time a new and interesting concept, and this play with, with reality and virtual reality, although uh, it didn't really have the depth I was looking for, or which I would have uh, wanted from, from a movie with such a subject. What I can also pr uh, praise the movie for a little bit uh, is actually the psychology. I thought the characters were somewhat deeper that, than I had expected. They were much deeper than for example in Justice League which came last year and also much deeper than in, uh, for example, Michael Bay's movies, if you compare it to the first Transformer, Transformers or, or, or other movies by Michael Bay. Uh, this movie actually had some characterization. You didn't really have a character arc, the, the characters didn't really change that much, but they had their problems and they were talking about their problems also in the movie, which I thought was good. I was a little bit surprised. Uh, of course, it's not a character study, but there was more uh, uh, character uh, in there that, that I had expected and I was actually pleasantly surprised. Then to the negatives, uh, the main problem of course are the villains, like in most uh, uh, action movies. They were uh, really flat and also fairly boring I thought in this movie. What also was boring was the scientist who created this game, uh, who uh, was really boring and not also seemed more like a junkie. In, in most uh, action movies where scientists appear, they are like the comic relief of the movie and are made to be crazy or, uh, or very over the top. But this scientist was more like a junkie, talking very slowly, he seemed really stupid. Of course he was also a cliché, he had uh, 
problems uh, talking to women and so on. Uh, uh, and But uh, they, they could have done more with this character, at least made him intelligent, which obviously he was not. So I was a little bit disappointed with this aspect of the film because he has quite, actually quite a lot of screen time. What was also a bit too simple, I thought, was the message in the movie. Yes, there is a message in there, but it is very simple. And it was also a bit too obvious, I thought. It was just uh, try not to spend too much time in virtual realities. Spend more time in the real world with your loved ones. Then you will have a better life. That is the message of the movie. And it, it offered no, no room for interpretation or for um, relating it to your own life. If uh, there is such a clear message stated so clearly, uh, there is nothing to discuss, nothing to think about, and you don't engage in it emotionally if uh, you, you're not given room for uh, relating it to your own life and interpreting it in your own way. But I was uh, pleasantly surprised by this movie. I was thoroughly entertained. It was a fun experience. I will not see this movie again, but I don't uh, re uh, regret having seen it. It was nice. And uh, if you're into science fiction, uh, if you're into action movies in general, uh, and if you uh, have, like me, seen a lot of movies uh, from the 80s and uh, like to go on a, a nostalgia trip to see a lot of these objects and characters come together in a movie, then I recommend this film to you. If you are a hardcore uh, SF philosopher, uh, I would perhaps uh, rather suggest you to that you uh, watch Inception one more time rather to go and see this film. Thank you for, for your attention. Please give me your comments below what you thought about this little presentation. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this. And of course, you're free to subscribe and I will talk to you soon again.